Good morning. God bless you on the 26th day of November 2023. I was about to say 2022, but 2023. God bless you. My name is Pastor Curtis. Welcome to another live broadcast. We are live coming to you from Zurich, or should I say cold Zurich, Switzerland. But I really believe that this, I'm not, I'm not bringing bad news, but I believe it's going to be a very cold winter. So just be prepared. If you don't have gloves, please get some gloves right now. Don't try to buy gloves when everybody else is getting the gloves. Get your scarf, all the stuff that you need to stay healthy. Do that, and uh, you'll be prepared. Because Christians sometimes are so uh, late, and I believe we should be the first ones to be with the gloves, with the hats, with the scarves, with the coats. The first ones, not the last ones, okay? Amen. And I believe many times God is leading us and guiding us, but we're lazy. We don't follow him, amen? We don't do what he says. So today we're going to talk about eagles and renewing your strength. And I do know this, that before the Lord Jesus Christ comes, that going, there is going to be a great change in the body of Christ. And it's going to take a lot of strength to go through what the world is about to go through. I, I had um, the privilege of having my sister here for three days in Zurich for Thanksgiving. So I'm hosting her for three days. I hadn't seen her in five year, four or five years. So, uh, and I'm with her 24 hours a day, three days, 24 hours a day for three days. Yeah, so that's a lot of time. So then, of course, she's asking me all of these questions. And then all of a sudden, we got to talking about the end times. And when I showed her all of the signs that I had, she went almost crazy. Nuts, as we say in English. She went crazy. She couldn't believe and then I just showed her. I just look at this, look at this, look at this. Oh my God! Oh my God! So I believe that, um, that people are waking, waking, uh, waking up. But I also believe this. I believe that that you are going to have to tell people about the times we're living in. Okay? They 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 they're aware of some things happening. She said, uh, my sister said, I am aware of them building these 15-minute cities, but I didn't know what they were doing. I'm aware of CBDCs, but I didn't know what that meant. I'm aware of uh, uh, banks closing, but I didn't know what that. So you, our job is to help them put the puzzle, the pieces of the puzzle together without scaring them. OK, so you can do it in the way where they can receive that. Amen. So um, we're going to start with slide one. And as you see, it says waiting for change. And this is a. Um, what do they call these things? Um, um, uh, solar, if you want a suntan, solar, a solar bed, what do they call this thing? A tanning bed. This is a tanning bed. And this is the greatest illustration that I could, myself, could come up with to illustrate my message today or what God wants to say to you. And a tanning bed is not for black people. <laughs> I must say that right away. It's not for black people. A tanning bed is for white people, which means really that white people more, need more prayer than black people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, a tanning bed. Now, if you go into this tanning bed, even Susanna has never been in a tanning bed to my knowledge. Um, but a tanning bed is, am is amazing because uh, black people want to be white and white people want to be black. And that's just how it is. I remember when I was in the Philippines, uh, maybe a few years ago, I, I walk into this, uh, what they call SM, an SM mall, a huge mall, and I walk in there, and these ladies were at the door as I walked into in one of these stores, and she tried to sell me some whitening cream. <laughs> so, I'm not kidding you. So I said, I said, what are you trying to tell me? <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? I'm too dark? She literally tried to sell me some, some, some whitening cream. So there, uh, people are confused wherever you go. You go to China on the beach, they have a full burqa on <laughs> so they don't get too dark. So uh, people are confused. But I do know this in this tanning bed, the longer you stay, the darker you become. Or the longer you stay, the greater your results. Let's go to slide two. You can see this. You go into the, the tanning salon. You go in there, you're white as a ghost. In 15 minutes, you're a little darker. In 30 minutes, you're a little darker. 50 minutes, you're a little darker. And in one hour and 15 minutes, you're darker. Okay? So the idea is that when you go into this tanning salon or this booth here, 
you go in there, and by the time you are, let's say an hour, by the time this hour's up, you have obtained your objective is to become darker. Because you know, it's, it's, it's February. And just in eight weeks, it's going to be time to go out there. So I need to hurry up and get my tan. And this is what, and, and, and the, the, the message I have, if, if the Christian would spend as much time in the prayer tanning saloon as they do on YouTube, watching YouTube, or as they do watching TV, you would have much greater results if you did that. Amen? And I'm going to show you here in a second. And it's amazing that when I read the, uh, uh, study this message, I see that with God, He is a God of light. Actually, the scripture says God is light, okay? And in Him is no darkness at all, all right? So we can go to slide three, and I'm not going to read the verse here because everybody knows that Moses spent 40 days twice, the first 40 days, he received the Ten Commandments. Then he was so mad at Aaron and the children of Israel that he broke the Ten Commandments, and he went up there again. So for 80 days, he was in the presence of God. Now, there's something that happens to you when you're in the presence of God. And slide four tells you this, uh, Exodus 34. So Moses was there. Uh, everybody say there. Where's there? The tanning salon. That's right. Moses was there in the tanning salon because God is son. When you spend time in the tanning salon of prayer with God, something's going to happen. You know, watch. It says this, 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking water, he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And when Moses came down from the Mount Sinai with two tablets of testimony in his hands, he was unaware that his what? Face was shining, had become radiant from what? From being in the tanning salon. Okay? Now, I'm going to make this, and I was asking the Lord, how do I make this practical so you don't just hear a message and go home and say, what did the pastor preach on? Blah, blah, blah. We, we don't want to, Jesus is coming soon. We can't waste a Sunday. <laughs> we cannot waste Sunday on a bad sermon, Okay? This sermon has to be so good for you and for your life that you go home saying, that really helped me. Okay? You have to say that. If you, don't, if you go to a church and you leave on a Sunday and you can't say, that helped me, then you probably at the wrong church. Or the pastor preached the wrong message. Okay? And so for me, I do everything in my power never to preach the wrong message. OK, even if I'm wrong in the beginning, I believe God will steer me right. OK, so I'm not going to you're not going to have a 99 percent wrong message. OK, so here's Moses in verse 29. Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the testimony in his hand. He was unaware that his face had become radiant from speaking with the Lord. So pr praying with speaking with God is prayer. OK, and it says this. Aaron and all the Israelites looked at Moses. Behold, his face was radiant. And, and, and they were afraid to approach him. And I noticed this. The more, uh, the more I know people who pray, the more the devil is afraid to approach them. You hear that, what I said? The more you pray, the more the devil is afraid to approach you, to attack you. Okay. The less you pray, he says, this guy's too lazy to pray. I can attack him and keep attacking him and keep attacking him. And you, have, you ever notice, the devil has no mercy. I'm telling you, he has no mercy. If you, if you got hit in the head 20 times and you're crying and you're bleeding and your face is swollen up, the devil's going to say, do 21. Hit 21 times. Hit her again. Hit her again. He has no mercy at all. Okay? So it's up to the Christian, to the believer to be strong in the Lord. Okay, so we know that Moses was in the presence of God in the prayer tanning saloon, and when he was in there, the, the glory and the light of God was just permeating his face, his flesh, okay? And when he came out of there, people could not stand to look at him because he was, had such the glory of God. I remember a story of a, 
uh, a missionary in, um, in one of the countries, and he had a guest speaker. And the guest speaker was his, one of his best friends. So his guest speaker, I think, was in Asia. He flew to Asia, and, he, and when he met him at the airport, he said immediately, I looked at his countenance, his face, and I knew that he's not doing good. I knew he didn't have no joy. You could look at his face and tell he doesn't have the victory. And I knew something's not right with him. Well, they spent some time together as they're, you know, eating and eating and eating. And then uh, uh, soon they realized uh, what his problem was. And I noticed this. I've been in many countries, over 50 countries. I noticed this. When God sends me to a church or to a country to help that church or to help that Bible school, I noticed I'm, I'm almost 75% there only for the pastor and his wife and kids. You know why I say that? Because when I go there, I minister to them more than I do to the congregation because they need it. They need to be encouraged. They need to be refired. They need to be helped. They need, uh, and, uh, uh, they need to be talked to so that they don't quit. People don't understand. That's why if you're not in, in one of the five-fold ministry gifts, you don't understand what those who are in that five-fold go through on a daily and weekly basis. They go through so much. They don't need you to add on to what the devil's doing, okay? You should help that pastor, help the pastor's wife, help the pastor's kids, help them be victorious. Just I'm not saying for the year, just for that week, just for that week. Make their week better. Make their month better. Amen? So um, when, you, when I think about being in the presence of God, and I'm going to tell you my own personal story in, in a few moments, I think about... With God, it's all about God wanting to let his power or his glory or his radiance pervade your flesh. Not just your spirit, man, but also your flesh. In other words, um, when I was thinking about this message, I thought about what is the battery to a human being? What is the battery? What's the battery to your body? What is the battery to your body? Anybody know? Yeah, so I heard somebody say it. The, the battery to your body is your spirit. And if your spirit is ch completely charged up, it's going to affect your whole body. It's going to affect your liver, your, 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 your lungs, your thinking, your brain. If your spirit man is strong, it's going to affect even your flesh. Okay? And that's why when you see someone who, uh, they had a, a, a school in Seattle, Washington, that was ran by a woman named um, uh, Lillian be yeoman. I, I just remember that from years ago. And in this school in Seattle, it was not even the school. It was like a like a, a a place where you go to die. Christians go to die. It's their last chance. So they would send people to her school, and she had a sister also. And when you the, the first moment you walk, because they people had stage four cancer, they had all they're ready to die. All believers and people would send them there. And the first thing they would do is when you walked in that door, they took away your anything that you had, the newspaper, anything negative, they took it away from you, and they immediately started playing Christian verses in your room. And they played it and played it and played it and played it and played it. And what they were doing, they are driving out fear, driving out unbelief, driving out doubt, and in its place, putting in the Word of God. And many miracles happened in that school. Because the two sisters, they literally said, God's word is medicine. And it says this, it's medicine to your flesh. So she would uh, flood their spirit man with the word of God. The spirit man got charged up and strong. And from that spirit, their body became strong. And literally, watch this, kicked out cancer. Kicked out disease. In some cases, some people got new liver, new lungs, new body parts, new organs because the power of God recreated that, those things. Amen? People uh, forget sometimes that Peter sliced off an ear of a soldier and the ear grew back. This is not just a story. It really happened. Okay? And so God can do recreative miracles. Hallelujah. Now, um, with God, um, and uh, let me tell you my story. Um, um, 
in the 80s, I came back to the Lord. I was always a, 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 my father and mother were pastors, so I was always in church. And then I joined the military. After the military, or during the military, I kind of left God. I kind of went on my own because in the military, it's easy to do that, okay? Because you're with a whole bunch of people you never knew. And they're all from all over the United States, all kind of cultures, all kind of beliefs. You know, you get caught up in that stuff. So I was caught up in there, and I finally came back to the Lord um, uh, probably about two and a half years when I, once I joined the military. And now I'm, I'm, I'm not born again. I was born again, but I was what they call backslidden. I was away from God. So I finally came back, and this is what I did, and this is what, what my sermon is about today. I read the Bible that says, Jesus says, when you, when you pray, go into your closet. Well, I literally took that as <laughs> literal Literal. I literally went into my closet to pray. I'm not kidding you. I could I can take you to my my apartment. I had a carpet on the floor. A heater was in that room, and I spent a lot of time in my bathroom just praying. That was my salon, okay. And I would just pray and pray and just worship the Lord and pray in the spirit and pray and worship. And then I'd even bring my Bible in there. And I could, I could spend hours in that room. It was a little tiny room, but it was so cozy, and it was just me and God. But when I'm in there, I would come out feeling revigor, revigorated, revigorated, revitalized, stronger. I had joy I, that I didn't have when I walked into that room, okay? So that was my prayer closet. And when I go in there, God would speak to me. He would give me answers. He would, my mind was illuminated. I, I, I could think straight. I had ide godly ideals. And I'm sure that most Christians, they don't pray. They don't stay in that salon long enough. Go to slide two. They don't pray and stay in that salon long enough to see change. There's no change. You still look white. <laughs> You must change. If you want to change, you got to stay longer in there. Amen. Go to slide five. Matthew 17, one through two. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. He took Peter, James, and John and led them up to a salon that's right, the salon. And by themselves, there he was what? Trans what? Figured. That's my, that's, that's my prayer. I want to be transfigured. I want to be new. I want to be different. I don't want to be me. I want to be like him. How can I be like him? It says, go up to the high place. That's prayer. The only way to be different is by praying and not just praying for 15 minutes and five minutes and expecting to change. It says this, there he was transfigured before them. His face was shining like the sun. His clothes became white as light. I'm telling you, when you're in the presence of God, you will change. And I can tell you right now, I know it for a fact, that people don't pray. And if they do pray, they're praying while the TV's on. They're praying while they're watching YouTube videos. They're praying while they're doing video games. That ain't prayer. That's playing. That's not praying. That's playing. Okay? Go to slide 6, Revelation 1.16. He held in his right hand seven stars, a sharp double-edged sword came from his mouth. His face, talking about Jesus, was like the sun shining at its brightness. Wow. I'm telling you, when you pray, see, the ideal of a, of a tanning saloon is that you get the, the, the light becomes so bright inside this tanning saloon that it goes in your pores. It goes on your skin. It begins to change. Well, prayer will do that for you. If you stay in prayer long enough, it will happen for you. Amen. And then it says this in, 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 in slide seven, Judges chapter five. So may all your enemies perish, O Lord, but may those who love you shine 
as its brightness, brightest, and the land, the land had rest for 40 years. Look at that woman. Look at the glow on her face. I know this is not a pregnant glow. I heard women when they're pregnant, they have a glow. No, this is not the same glow. This is not the same glow as a pregnant woman. This is a glow that comes from prayer, from the glory of God resting on your skin. Look at that glow. Look at that image. It's beautiful. She's, she has no, the prayer will take away pimples. Look at that. Put it back on the screen. Prayer will take away pimples if you stay there long enough. It will change your skin. It will change your pores. You're laughing, but I really believe this. How do I know? Because they had the same clothes in the desert for 40 years, and the clothes did not wear out. Same shoes, nothing wore out. Same jacket, nothing wore out. There's, a, there's, there's power in the glory. Amen. Look at slide 8. It says this, contemporary Bible, Luke 9, 29. While he was praying, his face... See that? Changed. Jesus. While he was praying, his face changed. If you're praying, if you go into prayer and come out of prayer and your face is the same, you didn't pray. You played. Say it again. If you go into prayer and come out of prayer and your face didn't change, you may go in depressed, weak, doubting, but when you come out of prayer, you should be full of joy, happiness, and expectation. God is doing something. That's right. That's how you should come out of prayer. You don't go in prayer depressed and come out of prayer depressed. Then something's wrong. You're not praying right. I don't care if you did this 10 times. And that ain't going to change. Okay? Slide nine. This is what the theme of my message is about today. Slide nine says this. I waited patiently. Uh-oh, just stop right there. I'm in the salon, the tanning saloon. I am waiting, what? Patiently. Now, what do I mean by this, waiting on the Lord? What does that mean? Waiting on the Lord. Hmm? Now, it may mean different things to different people, but for me, I'm going to tell you how, what, what, it, what I receive from this, uh, especially being a, a minister, is that when I'm praying, I can go to my closet or I can go to some room, and I do know for a fact that when I decide to pray, I know for a fact the devil told somebody to call me. It's not a, it's not a doubt. If I say I'm going to pray, somebody's going to call me, okay? Or if, if, if God says, I want you to pray now, I'm going to remember that sandwich in the refrigerator even though it's 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm going to remember that because I know he wants me to distract it. He don't want me to pray. The devil don't want you to pray. Be, be, believe, believe that. Why? Because if you have not because you ask not, if you ask, then you will receive, right? So you... Prayer is asking God. Prayer is fellowshipping with God. Prayer is being in the salon and just uh, receiving the rays of God. But if I'm not doing that, I'm not benefiting from that relationship. Amen? So <clears throat> it says this, I waited patiently and expectantly for the Lord, and he what? Inclined to me, and he heard my cry. He brought me out of a horrible pit for, this is uh, um, um, uh, talking about renewing your strength, crying to the Lord, asking the Lord to help you because you're in trouble and you need deliverance, you need help. Amen. And then it says this, uh, 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 verse 2, he brought me out of a horrible pit of tumult and of destruction, out of the miry clay, it says, out of the miry clay. And he set my feet upon a rock, steadying my footsteps and establishing my path. He put a new song. Look what prayer does. I mean, he put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear with great reverence and will trust confidently in, lo in the Lord. I tell you what, if you go through and do prayer correctly and you allow God 
to speak to you. Let, let, me, let me give you an example. Let's say you say, uh, I'm going to go pray, and I'm going to go pray for 25 minutes. And you're praying, in, maybe you're praying in the spirit or praying in your mother tongue, and then you say you're praying and praying, and then you say, okay, Lord, I thank you, amen. And the Lord said, wait, 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 don't go, wait, wait, don't go yet. Wait for a moment. Can I say something now? For 20 minutes, you've been talking. <clears throat> 20 minutes, you've been talking. Now it's my turn. Can I respond? Most of us just pray 20 minutes, get up and go and say, have a good day. <laughs> have a good day. I'm going to have a good day. No. God may say, wait, wait, before you go, I'm going to tell you what to do. Before you go, I'm going to tell you who to meet. Before you go, I'm going to tell you who to call. Before you get off your knees, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. But most of us, we never get to that point. We are always going to slide two. Hurry, 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 slide two. Slide two. We are always at the 30-minute mark, if we get that far. And slide two, the 30-minute mark, is you're half-baked. <laughs> I said slide two, the 30-minute mark, you're half-baked. You're not there yet. You want to go as dark as you can if you're white. Right? So unless you wait on the Lord to get his response, you're just going to get up real quick and think, you know, oh, God has it, God has it, God has it. Yeah, God may have it, but God wanted to tell you exactly what to do and where to go. Amen? I know this woman. Oh, man. She's got many, many testimonies. Actually, she was a member of our church. She's from the Philippines. And she moved back to Manila a few uh, months ago. But she, she would talk to me and Susanna and tell us what God said. And to be honest with you, when she told me, I thought, this woman, there's no way God said that. There's no way. And then when she would go there, I mean, we were praying for her because I thought, there's no way I would do this. I would not do this. She would go there, and there was somebody who met her who God already told her. She has a red shirt. When you go to the airport, you'll see her, and there she was. And then she's going to take you to this building, and then when you go to the building, you're going to meet this guy, and there that guy was. And then you're going to have a meeting at 11, and there the meeting was 11, just like she said. God showed her in detail who to meet, what the shirt they had on. Remember, remember when, when, when God told um, Cornelius to send for Peter, and Peter was on the rooftop praying, and God told him the exact address to go, and he's going to be on the rooftop. God knows where you live and what you wear in detail. But he only got that because he waited on the Lord to hear what God is saying. Many times we get an idea and run with it. No, we need to pray about it and wait on God to see what he's saying because we don't give God a chance to speak. We don't hear. Somebody said, why do you think God gave us one mouth and two ears? So you can hear, not talk, okay? And so if we understand that, man, I'll tell you, you're going you're to spend more time in the presence of God. And just say, uh, Lord, I'm going to make an, uh, an appointment with you. I want to spend time in your presence. And I'm not going to get up until I get an answer. Sometimes you've got to be desperate, you know. And you say, oh, Lord, you know, the Bible talks about a man named Hezekiah who, who was given a death sentence. So the Bible says Hezekiah turn his face, well, let's, let's put it in today's language, Hezekiah went into the tanning saloon. And he stayed in the tanning saloon until God turned the prophet around to come back and change what he had already been decreed. Because he turned his back to the wall. That's prayer. Because there ain't nobody can help me but God. And that's what he did, and it was change. Amen. Now, slide 10 says this. Everybody knows the scripture, but he gives power to the faint, 
It's not 10. He increases the strength of the weak. Even youth grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those who go into the tanning saloon will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. That's right. Now, he's talking about the eagle right here. You see the picture of an eagle. That's my first picture of an eagle. You saw it right there. Slide 10. Now, listen to this. Eagles get, eagles get or grow stronger. Did you know that? Eagles get or grow stronger with age. With age. While humans get or grow weaker with age. This is because eagles have a restoration or, or a renewal process in their mid-40s. The eagle goes through a pain, watch this. The eagle goes through a painful process for five months as part of this restoration. Can you imagine being in a tanning salon for five months? When you come out, you're going to be super eagle. The process requires that the eagle fly to the mountaintop and sit on a nest. There, the eagle knocks its beak off against a rock until it plucks it out, uh, uh, until it breaks it. And then the eagle will wait for the new beak to grow back, and then it will pluck out its talons. When its new talons grow back, the eagle starts plucking out its old age feathers. Can you imagine that? A whole process of being born again. The eagle will then wait for new feathers to grow, and once it grows, the eagle takes its famous flight of rebirth and lives for 30 more years. 30 more. Now, what, what, why would God say for us, it says he gives power to the faint. He increases strength to the weak, and you're not an eagle. Even the youth grow weary, tired. Young men stumble and fall, but those who wait on the Lord, they will mount up as wings of eagles. They will renew their strength. Don't tell me I'm old, I'm old, I'm old, I'm old. There's 30 more years in you if you break the beak, pull out the feathers. Let God renew you. Let God change you. And the, the main thing is wait on the Lord. Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If you, I'm not saying pray every day, but I am saying pray every day, but I'm not saying it. But pray every day. And the reason why I say it is because you're going to renew your strength. Jesus said this to the disciples. Can you not pray for one hour? Prayer will change your life. But I'm not just talking about prayer. I'm talking today about waiting on God. I mean, turn off the TV. And here's a, here's a, I'm taking a risk when I say this. Turn off the phone. I'm telling you why. Because the devil will have somebody call you. And it's not even important. The devil will be oh, this is a major, major, major emergency. Oh, just when God was about to speak to you, just when God was about to reveal to you what he wants you to do, the phone rings. Well, the phone can't ring when it's off. 
You can't watch YouTube when it's off. You can't turn on the computer when it's off. No. And here's my thing. Like Hezekiah, how serious are you? How much change do you really want? How much do you want this situation to be taken care of? How bad do you need that money? How important it is for your family to be saved? Is it enough to go into the tanning saloon and say, Lord, I'm here until I hear from you. I need an answer. And I'm not saying that God's going to give you that answer the moment you come out of that room. Sometimes you got to just, Lord, I, I thank you. You have it. You have this peace in your heart. You have this joy. You know God has it. You walk in, uh, you walk in uh, out of that prayer room, and maybe two hours later, a thought comes to you, or a phone call may come to you, or someone comes to you, and here's your answer. But we don't want to spend time with the Lord, and, and things never change. Look at this. The eagle will not have to worry about their health or their ability for the next 30 years. God promises to renew our strength like the eagle. It means that God will renew our physical bodies in such a way that there will be no weariness, no weariness, no weariness. Who did he write these verses to? Those 40 and under? <laughs> huh? Because somebody 40 and under doesn't need this verse. You hear what I say? If you're 40 and under, you don't need this verse. It's those who are 50 and over who need this verse. They need to be renewed like the eagle. Not someone 40. When I was 40, man, I had strength of 10 men. Come on. I didn't need to call somebody to move my pen. I'm moving myself. But 50, I'm calling people. Amen. So this verse is for older people. I'm almost done. I got, I got 10 minutes. It says this. God will renew our health and our physical bodies like a young person. They can grow spiritually so much and their physical bodies can keep them going. Now watch this. This is a true story. Everybody knows this guy named George Mueller. Most everybody knows him. He's world famous for taking care of orphans. George Mueller's life was transformed as a result of God's renewal or restoration process. At the age of 71, George Mueller embarked on a 17-year missionary journey. 17 years. He visited over 40 countries and traveled over 200,000 miles. No planes, not really planes, and no cars. There is no age restriction on who can work to complete God's plan as God can renew your strength. Waiting on the Lord is the process by which you enter the phase of renewed strength. The Lord will pluck both of our physical and spiritual strengths, qualities, and abilities during this process and bring us to nothing. So there's a place where you come over the age of 50 where you say, doctors can't help me. I'm just, the aging process has taken this form and no one can help me but God. Really, the doctors can give you all kinds of medication and try to find the, the fountain of youth. <laughs> There's, they've been looking for the fountain of youth forever. They haven't found it yet. So there is the only process I know that can reverse aging is Isaiah 40. That's your fountain of youth. Amen. Amen. So it says this. When we reach this, this age of nothingness, the Lord bestows his divine strength and nature on us, renewing our strength both spiritually and physically. Believe me, one day I went to my doctor here in Zurich. 
I was 52 years old or so. And he gave me a shot in my hiney, my behind. And then he touched my behind again. And I'm thinking, what's this man doing? He said, how old did you say you were? <laughs> I, said, I said to myself, he doesn't have probably too many black patients, so I'm sure. So he's wondering how my skin could be so tight at my age. And he's looking, but he can do nothing to help me with the elast elasticity of my skin or yours. Gravity is gravity is going to take its course. Everything high is going to go low. You can do nothing about that. But there is an Isaiah 40 that can change that. I really, how do I know? Because Sarah was 80 years old and they still wanted to steal her. How did she get this way? Amen. The Bible says this. When I first got married 32 years ago, we we're in Italy. And remember, this is 32 years ago. So when you say, I'm going to go get my hair done, that's the same technology wasn't there in 32 years ago. So Susanna would go to the beautician and they would do her hair and it would last like the perm would last for like 40 days, maybe 45 days. And uh, the, 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 uh, the lady said, it could probably last for 90 days, you know, if you did everything right, you know. And so I'm paying for this. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. Every 90 days is going to cost me $120? That's too much money. It's got to be something better. So then Susan came to me one day, and, and the thought came to me. I started thinking about the children of Israel in the desert and how God made one pair of shoes last 40 years and one pair of pants last 40 years and a woman's dress 40 years. So I started praying with Susan. Now, when you be, right before you go to the hair place, let's pray. Let's believe God. And people were laughing at me. I said, you can laugh all you want. The Bible says, according to your faith. Your faith. Not the doctor's faith. Not your sister. Not your pastor. According to your faith, let it be done. So I said, so now let's pray that this perm lasts six months. Not 90 days. Six months. In the name of Jesus, I don't care what you have got to do to those chemicals, but make them stretch, stretch, stretch. That's what I'm believing. You guys are laughing. I'm serious. And I know we don't put our faith on those things because we think it's impossible. It's impossible. According to your faith, be done to you. So I prayed my wife, Lord. And man, I'll tell you what, those days, it would prolong, 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 go forth. If you believe, all things are possible to him that believes. All things. What is all things? Well, that means hair, all things. Chemicals, all things. Permanence, all things. That's right. All things. So I have food faith, I have safety faith, and I have perm faith. What kind of faith do you have? What kind of faith do you have? Watch this, and I'm done. The waiting period or restoration process for an eagle is five months. For humans, it depends on how quickly they submit to the will of God. How quickly? It varies from person to person. It could take five years for some. It could take two months for others. Don't worry if, if you are in the restoration or waiting process. Submit your life to God so he can pluck out the old feathers. This is a good sermon. You won't go home and say, this didn't help me. If you did, you'd be lying. And I'll pluck out your feathers. <laughs> the process, this process is both young. It's for both young and old people. Don't resist the Lord's plucking. The Lord plucks everything until there's no tra trace of self left. However, once our waiting, waiting process is over, our strength will be renewed. It will be completed. 
We will have renewed divine strength, renewed physical bodies, refreshed spirits, and become like a young person. With this renewed strength, we will grow wiser, healthier as we age. We will mount up like wings of eagles, scale new heights in our relationship with God, and begin to do great exploits for God. And my message is over, but I want to say this. I'm done. I remember a story of a man who got tuberculosis, a preacher, he's a preacher, tuberculosis. And, the doc, and this, is, this is back in the 30s and 40s, and the doctor said, we don't have uh, uh, medication for those that, in these days, so you're just going to have to die. So he, this guy, I mean, he prayed, and he actually, he had all, he said, he said, if I counted, there was hundreds of people all over America praying for me. I never got better. Finally, the doctor says, there's nothing we can do. You're going to die. This is going to uh, kill you. So he went to his mom's house in the country and just waited to die, you know. So as he was there in the country, he still, he still had his Bible, was still reading, still, you know, had a little bit of faith. And, but now he's getting down to the last days. So he says he looked outside his window and he saw this tree that they used to play on as a kid way over there in the field. And this guy is so weak, he can't even let, 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 uh, kneel almost. So he said, Lord, just give me enough strength to crawl to that tree, and then, then I'll die. So he's on his way crawling. But as he's crawling, he just begins to praise God. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. This is a true story. I'm not I'm making this story up. It's an absolutely true story. And he said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And then he, he started remembering God's the healer. I mean, I'm a preacher. I know God. People got healed from my hands. God is the healer. God said, so he says, the closer he got to that tree, he began to, to praise the Lord, and his voice got stronger and stronger and stronger. He said, by the time I got to that tree, I was shouting so loud and standing on my two feet, completely healed. Because God literally transformed his body from that little distance from his house to that to that tree, and his faith, he began to praise God when it seemed like literally this is my last hours, and God healed him. And that's why we're talking about him today is because God healed him. It was literally a miracle, and everybody knew that this man was supposed to die. And I'm telling you, the power of God is always present. It's always in the room. Everybody knows that when Jesus healed that man that was let down through the roof, the roof the Bible says, and the presence of the Lord was there to heal. It was always there. But they tapped into it. And when you tap into the power of God, the presence of God, the anointing of God, I'm telling you, God can give you a new kidney, a new liver, a new eye, a new whatever you need. God can do it. And I know another story of a man who was blind. I mean, it was an accident, but his eye literally, the eye literally was, was, uh, was taken out of his face. And he began to pray. And the doctors put in what they call a glass eye. And when they pray for this man, that glass eye was still there in his eye. But the doctor said, said Close, cover your right eye. And he covered his right eye and could see out of the glass eye. How in the world could you see out of the true story? Brother Hagan tells this story. Kenneth Hagan. And he said that the doctors examined him a hundred times and said, we don't know how, but this guy can see out of a fake eye. Because there's nothing too hard for God. Nothing. It depends on God's people trusting him to do the impossible. Impossible God can do. And this is the God we serve. So please, in closing, I want you to just stop talking about your body. Stop talking about what it's not doing. Stop talking about your aches and pains. Stop talking about the liver and the lung and all this stuff. Start believing God to renew your body, renew your strength. But it only comes by going into the salon. Because the longer you stay in there, give me slide two again. The longer you stay in there, the greater the manifestation of God's power. You're going to be in leg number five. 
They're going to be leg number five. Everybody wants black legs. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you want God to change you, you say, Lord, I'm coming to pray, and I'm going to be here for a while. And I'm going to tell you what real prayer is. Real prayer is you not always making noises. Real prayer is you, because in the tanning salon, you have no earplugs, you have no music, you're just sitting there. Like, every, have you ever had an MRI in one of these machines? In the MRI machine, you're just in there with just you and God. And in that MRI machine is just you and God. And you are forced to stay there and hear Him. Well, do it at home. And you're going to see a change. You're going to see a great change in your life and in your physical body if you give God time. Amen? And with that, God bless you, eagle. Bless you, bless you. You are on your way to being renewed, to being changed. You're on your way to being that person that you want to be. You're on your way to be in the second phase of an eagle's life. Amen? And you can be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen? God bless you. We'll see you on the next live broadcast.